In the previous segment, as you know, we have proven the Snell's law of refraction on the basis of Huygens wave theory. In this particular segment, we will be discussing about the reflection law and prove the law of reflection that is angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection on the basis of Huygens wave theory. So, let us see that perspective. Now, in this case, you can clearly see I have taken an interface A A dash which is a reflecting surface. Now, on this reflecting surface, I have incident beam and that incident beam is making a certain angle I with the line of normal. Now, we know a wave front is perpendicular to this incident beam. Then, this P Q is the incident wave front that we have. Now, in this incident wave front, you can clearly see the part which is at the point P has struck the mirror and the part which is at Q still has to travel certain distance to reach to the point R. That is the point of striking. Now, if I see this perspective and according to the Huygens theory, we know each point on a wave front is a source of secondary wavelets and to get a new wave front, we need to do some geometrical construction. So, in this case, you can clearly see light ray coming from point Q or the secondary wavelets emanating from the point Q has to take certain extra t time to travel to the point R. And let us suppose the time taken by the light to travel from Q to R is t and we know speed of light in medium 1 is v. This Q R distance is v t. I hope this is very clear to you. Now, in the same time interval, a new wave front which is emanating from the point P is going to travel again the same distance Vt in the upper medium because the material is a reflecting surface. So, it is going to reflect back those secondary waves in the upward direction itself. So, what is going to happen if I make an arc of the radius Vt, this Ps is the curve that I am going to get. This is the kind of secondary wavelets I am going to get. Now, if I take the tangents of two secondary wavelets, the one which is emanating from point Q has reached to the point B. So, this is the curve. The one which is emanating from point P has reached to the point S. If I take the tangent of these two secondary wavelets, I am going to get the new reflected wavefront. And in this case, the reflected wavefront is R S. I hope this is very clear to you. Now, after the construction of this reflected wavefront, I am going to get these two geometrical triangles. You can clearly see these two triangles. What are these triangles? These are P, R, Q and P, R, S. I hope these two triangles are clearly visible to you. Now, since this is the incidence angle, this angle would also be I because this P, Q is the perpendicular to the incident beam. Now, similarly, when this Q, R is the incident ray at point R, it has reflected at a certain angle R. So, in the triangle P R S, this angle P R S is going to be R, small r that is the angle of reflection. Now, if I take a look at these two triangles and write down the similarity laws in these, we can clearly see this Q R is V T and this P S is also V T. So, these two sides are same. Now, the next major thing is that their base of these two triangles is same that is P R. So, if I take a closer look at these two triangles, the sides, perpendicular sides are equal, the hypotenuse sides are equal and the angle I and angle R are different. But these two angles that is P S R 90 degree and angle P Q R this is 90 degree. So, using these similarity laws, I can say these two triangles are similar and whenever we have similar triangles, we can clearly see that all the angles are also similar. So, in this case, angle I and angle R is also equal and that is how Huygens principle can be used to prove the law of reflection that angle of incidence and angle of reflection are equal and all the angles are measured from the line of normal. So, I hope this whole scenario of the Huygens wave theory is very clear to you. So, moving further ahead and let us see what happens when a plane wave front incident on different devices. So, what are these devices? Let us see them one by one. So, let us take the first device as the prism. Now, I have taken a prism, you can clearly see a perfectly shining prism. Now, 
on this prism you can clearly see whenever different rays are incident we know how to draw a ray diagram but if i want to see the wavefront perspective of a prism we know whenever a incident ray is passing through the prism it gets deviated but what is the perspective of a wavefront so whenever a planar wavefront is incident on a prism you can clearly see the wavefront which is in the lower section has to travel a largest distance through the glass and the upper portion of the wavefront has to travel a very less distance from the glass so whenever a light travels from air to the glass its speeds gets decreased so the lower portion of the wavefront gets slow down a bit and the upper portion gets slow down least so what is going to happen the wavefront is going to incline with a certain angle and it gets deviated from its initial path so that's how the prism is going to behave whenever a plane wavefront is incident on it so i hope this is very clear to you these different perspectives are very important because sometimes the direct questions from the wavefront diagrams can be asked in your competitive examination so let's study a behavior of the convex lens whenever a plane wavefront is incident on it so in this case we have taken a perfectly polished convex lens now when the rays are incident when the paraxial rays or the parallel rays to the principal axis are incident on a convex lens we know all these rays gets converged to the focus of the convex lens but what happens with the wavefront perspective if a plane wavefront is incident on the convex lens we know the lens is thicker in the middle and thin at the edges so the wavefront which is passing through the middle portion of the lens has to travel most of the time through the glass and the side portion has to travel less time in glass but more time in air so what happens is the middle portion of the wavefront gets slow down a bit as compared to side portions so a planar wavefront gets converged and bend from the both sides and convert into a converging wavefront which has a center at the focus of the convex lens so i hope this is very clear to you now let's take a look at a different perspective that is concave lens we know in the case of concave lens the lens is thin at the middle and a thick at the edges so what is going to happen the opposite is going to happen whenever a planar wavefront is going to incident on a concave lens the middle portion is going to advance a little bit and the side portion are going to remain behind then the plane wavefront which is emerging out of the concave lens is going to convert into a wavefront which has a center on the left side of the concave lens that is the focus of the concave lens i hope this is very clear to you so till now i have given you an idea of wave fronts which are passing through a transparent medium but what happens when a wave front strikes a mirror yes so let's take another case that is the case of convex mirror so what happens with a convex mirror so let's take a perfectly polished shining convex mirror and striking a parallel rays on the convex mirror we know whenever a parallel rays are falling on a convex mirror a virtual image is formed at the focus which is on the right side of the mirror that is behind the mirror but what happens with a wave front then when a plane wave front is incident on the convex mirror the middle portion of the wave front gets reflected by the convex mirror at the earliest and the later portion are going to strike the mirror at a later time that means what is going to happen the middle portion is going to propagate earlier than their side counterparts and what is going to happen is it is going to generate a wave front which has a center at its focus on the right side so this convex mirror is exactly going to behave like a concave lens but the thing is the wave fronts in case of concave lens are going to propagate on the right side but in the case of convex mirror it is going to propagate in the left side i hope the whole discussion and the behavior of different wave fronts whenever we are passing them through different devices is very clear to you so i hope the whole idea of the huygens wave theory and the history the introduction of wave theory wave front ray of light propagation of energy and all the different terms are very clear to you now that's all about the conceptual perspective of this lecture so let's try to solve few numericals in the next segment